one of the hundreds of wide-bodied planes that come to the UPS Whirlport in Louisville, Kentucky, every day. It's here that two million packages are sent across the world. And over the next half hour, we're going to show you the UPS system and discuss where the man in brown is headed next. First, we need to understand the backbone of UPS. We call it going forward fast. Business How do today. you go forward fast with a company this big? Well, you cannot uh, act like an incumbent. You've got to feel like if someone is going to try to disrupt the industry, then we have to have that mentality. So we talk about we have to make decisions much quicker. We have to not try to protect the past. We can be proud of the past. We have to embrace the future. And the future is all about technology, is our smart logistics network, and how we interconnect with our customers. On the question process. of the global economy, so. you're very big here. You've got a major center in Cologne. You have a major center in Shenzhen. Are you worried at a level of protectionism that is now coming into the world? A level where you, I mean, you know, you, we've seen it in rhetoric. We're starting to see it in action. We're starting to see the scintilla that global trade could be threatened. You know, at the same time that you do hear all that rhetoric, global trade is expanding right now, and we see it as, as much more optimistic than what we're hearing in the news. Now, we are big believers in free trade. Everywhere we've seen the U.S. sign a free trade agreement, our business, which is reflective of our customers, has increased 20%. So I assume it was a disappointment that the U.S. backed out of TPP, and you would urge the U.S. not to back out of NAFTA. Yeah, we are strongly urging the U.S., Canada, and Mexico to find ways to have a win-win-win situation. It's a 25 year old agreement. It needs to be modernized. It does not need to be eliminated. Supply chains are just so interconnected between the three countries. And yes, we would have liked to have seen TPP pass. There's no doubt about that. We still believe there's opportunities for additional agreements. I want to finish, since you've been very kind to give us a good, good, good dose of time. This, I, I, I have to keep coming back, David, to this idea of the disruptor. All right. The company that lets this big, the man in brown, how do you do it? What do you envisage disruption looks like so that you don't find your core business just eaten away by everybody else? Well, you have to embrace the future. You have to embrace the technology that did not exist in years past. We just formed an advanced technology group that is focused on not what's going to happen in the next two to three years, but much further down the road. We capture now 21 petabytes of information that we have stored. How to take that information, integrate it with our customers' needs, and be predictive in our analysis, help them to be more effective in their supply chains, which we will get the benefit of that, and that's what we're investing in. This is the calm before the storm inside at the well part. Do not be deceived. It all looks quiet, relaxed, but what you're looking at is a machine waiting to be fired up in the middle of the night. Hairspray for Houston, dog food for Dallas, samples to Sydney, a contract for Kansas. Sorting parcels seem so simple. The goods come in, they're sorted, and then they leave. But when your warehouse is bigger than 90 football fields, and you're handling 2 million packages a day, there's no room for a snooze at the UPS Worldport Hub in Kentucky. In charge of it all is Jason Foote. This facility, while on a normal day, may only process 2 million packages, during peak season will handle more than double that. Well, only, that's an enormous number. It is, but it's what we do every day. Cameras and conveyors everywhere. 155 miles of moving belts. While automation is key, humans remain part and parcel of this operation. Many of them working here 
are local students, and the pace is relentless. This is never ending. Hour after hour, these small packages flow into this tidal wave of sorting that now has to take place to ensure these little packages end up in the right destination. How do you keep track of all these parts? So all these parcels have a unique where the humans come in. They're needed to fill freight containers to the brim. What you want to do is you want to build up as high as you can, right? Kyle is the supervisor and showed me how. Think of playing Tetris. You want to start in this back left corner. Okay? Why? Why? Because that's where you're going to build your entire load off of. Right? And the way right? you want to do this is yeah. you want to build left to right as high as Why? you can go. Because that's your cornerstone package and that's going to be the hardest package. That's what you're building your entire Suddenly, a song came into my mind. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes made with ticky tape. Little boxes on the hillside. And they all look just the same. Live crickets. Crickets in the cargo. And Amazon logos grinning down on me everywhere. E-commerce is what's filling these containers. I'm just standing here, and I'm just seeing Amazon after Amazon after Amazon just going through. The, I mean, the e-commerce volume must be tremendous. Growth has been quite significant, and we have added opportunities in our, in our network to handle that. It's about half past one in the morning, and the tempo has increased roughly 300 80,000 packages an hour are now flowing into the world port. My parcels depart as quickly as they arrived, as those metal containers slide towards the planes. Amid all this high technology movement of commerce, there's a delicious simplicity about the way these containers are dragged around by hand. The fact is, as the network grows with demand, so does the risk of problems and challenges. It's a fine balancing act for those in control. We have 120 aircraft coming in, so it's bound to happen tonight, but we do it every night. We make that balance every single night. And that's when you're called up, and they say, is that right? No, we have about 10,000 people working at night that do a great job. They don't even need me. Kentucky is UPS's biggest facility, and it's not big enough. Future expansion means the place will handle half a million packages an hour. As our love of e-commerce grows exponentially, so does this logistics powerhouse. After all these parcels are sorted and packed, some will go off to their final destinations in iconic style. We'll climb aboard a Boeing 747-8. The passenger plane with a new lease on life as a freighter.